Hi there, my name is Heather J. Kreider, and I welcome you to the Go Reflect Yourself podcast. I'm here to bring you real practical brain-based strategies helping you transform your life one thought at a time. Working hard and staying busy will only get you so far. To truly become happy, content, and who you are meant to be, you have to move beyond physical capacities and look from within allowing you to overcome those obstacles and barriers. My mission is to help inspire you to take massive action, to transform your life, all starting from the inside out. I invite you to watch or listen to this podcast and share it with others who you feel can also benefit from it. I invite you to join my free Facebook group, Beat Burnout. That's where we provide more practical neuroscience and mindset strategies, helping you reduce stress, anxiety, and overcome overwhelm. Thank you so much for being here. I'm honored and grateful for you. You are stronger than you believe. You have greater powers than you know. Welcome to the Go Reflect Yourself podcast. I am your host, Heather J. Kreider, and I want to welcome you back if you are a past listener or watcher, or welcome you if this is your first time joining in. We aim here at this podcast to give you actionable micro practices or just tools, tips, and tricks for you to be more successful in your business, in your life, in whatever area you need. And that's why today I'm so honored to have Steve Morris, my guest for the today. And just a little bit about Steve. He started his career designing multi-million dollar racing yachts and building and coaching high performing teams to help his clients win the world's most demanding races. That's really exciting. He has run and grown a small business and transitioned to become a certified PMP program manager, managing million-dollar budgets and helping the U.S. Navy launch, launch ships into fleet. Six years ago, Steve started his own business with the mission and passion to help business owners build better lives through building better businesses, getting unstuck, feeling, fueling growth, and achieving more profit and having more fun. He's a professional EOS implementer and a certified in the Lego Serious Play Method and teaches and facilitates and coaches individuals, leaders, and business leaders, leadership teams on their voyage to success. So we have lots of uh, ship themes here. And Steve, if you're, if anybody's joining us on video, they can see Steve's ships behind him as well. So welcome to the show, Steve. Thanks for having me, Heather. It's great to be here this morning. I am honored and really excited. And I have to ask this. I know we, we've had a conversation or two and there's things we want to continue in our conversation today, but what is the Lego serious play method? That sounds super fun. Yeah. No, it is. So as you talked about, I've spent my whole career really pulling teams together and getting groups of people to be able to solve problems creatively and be able to get unstuck and move forward. I've got lots of tools in my toolbox. And one of them that I have that I really love using is called the Lego Serious Play Method. And it was actually developed by uh, Lego 20 years ago now um, to help them with their strategic planning process. And they pull together psychologists, um, educational experts, um, you know, business planners into a group within Lego and figured out, like, how could they do better? We're getting away from PowerPoint, you know, getting away from those usual sort of meetings where everybody's kind of, you know, sitting back in their chair, uh, thinking about something else, getting people engaged. Um, and that's what we do. We actually use Lego um to solve problems and it's using our hands you know as, as human beings we are tool users right we've built this incredible world around us um, with our hands and our and our brain and so we use those same tools uh together in a group um to help a group be able to solve creative problems together i love doing it 
I could imagine so. And you're so right. You know, for me, I always geek out on the neuroscience side and really start thinking about what our patterns and behaviors are. And we, quite frankly, we get taught not to tap into that creativity. And what a beautiful way to just explore and allow our brains to have that freedom. And I would imagine the Lego serious play method really helps not only facilitate that, but start to retrain the way we think as well. There's a lot of really interesting neuroscience behind the whole methodology, starting from the fact that the nerves in our hands are connected into about 70 to 80% of our brain cells. There's a very, very strong connection there. But then there's also a lot of psychology involved in it as well. So we, you know, I, I ask open-ended questions. Um, and then people start building models and they build models as metaphors to tell a story. And then it becomes something that's, you know, very creative, but also very safe. Uh, it's a very safe environment for a team to really go deep and go deep very quickly about you know, whatever problem it is that they're dealing with. Um, because when you can build a model and sort of encapsulate everything that you're thinking about into a model. And then you can point at the model and say, this is what this model means to me. Well, you can't be wrong about that. No one can say no, you know, wrong. You, you, you're incorrect. You're like, this is what this model means. This is what I'm seeing. And everybody else can get to see that as well. It's, it's a very powerful methodology. Absolutely. And such a unique process to be able to problem solve to just get you know I hate that phrase of out of the box thinking because there's I don't believe there's such a thing but we do tend to try to fit a mold and that's the whole point of being creative and allowing ourselves in the perspective of psychological safety within that this is our creation this is my interpretation of that. Now let's talk and explore and how we can put those pieces together for this bigger collective thing that we're working on. Mm. You're an engineer. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, of course. You know, what's interesting, I'm so, thank you for saying that because when we look at the models for having a well-rounded, well-being, successful life, fun usually ends up at the bottom of the list. Why yeah. not incorporate well, I, I did, it? I, I did a workshop um, with a group that I'm working with a couple of weeks ago. And it was just really interesting to, once we sort of got the Legos out and started working with it, like one of the people who's normally apparently sort of, sort of quite reserved and restrained was now very relaxed and very into it and laughing and, and having a lot of fun. And the other group members were like, I, you know, we've never seen you like this before. <laughs> so, whole new side of you. And this is what is able to come out. You know, we just sort of get some bricks on the table and, and start, you know, fiddling with the hands and, and relaxing um, and then having a deeper conversation. That's beautiful. I'm always reminded when I'm watching my kids and my kids are getting older and they have less and less of those just moments where they're just kids laughing and playing and not thinking about other things and we lose that as we start growing older so i think it's a great yeah. reminder to tap back into that youth if you will yeah <clears throat> no it's let's say when i work with the groups and get them to come into the room initially there's kind of like this like lego like what are we doing with lego <laughs> um but then i you know i remember this one workshop i did a couple of years ago where, you know, there was one individual sort of came into the room and, and they were a little resistant. Um, they were resistant to, to coming into the room anyway with the group to talk about what they wanted to, to process. So there's a lot of this sort of arms crossed and a lot of sort of scowling going on. <clears throat> but then um, at the stage in the workshop, this individual built this model um, it was a little strange looking, I will say, but <laughs> um, it allowed this individual to be able to, to retell really a story about um, perhaps where some of their resistance was coming from and about the fact that they, you know, were 
getting towards retirement and they were very concerned about the legacy that they wanted to leave in the organization and how they wanted to train you know, new people to, to take over their skills. And this whole story came out um, and that everybody, I think, was a little blown away by that they had no idea. Um, and it's because this individual in, in some way, you know, hadn't had a vehicle to really articulate to be able to say, you know, to have an environment to be able to say all of these things, but the model, the process provided that um, ability for them to do it. It was, it was really, a, you know, very, um, it was a lot of fun to be able to see that sort of come out from the group. What an empowering moment and a connected moment for that individual and for the whole group to be able to experience that. And I would imagine that happens more often than not. It does with the method, yes. I mean, it's, it's very tricky oftentimes when you have a group of people sitting around a table and then, you know, getting people to talk, um, to have that vulnerability to lean in um, to the table. But the method um, really allows, there's a structure to it that allows the conversation to happen. Um, because the conversation's about the model, not about the person, um, which really takes a lot of pressure off um, being able to tell a story. Yeah, that's huge. Now, you and I, when we had our last conversation, we were talking a lot about our own inner stories that we tell and the habits and the things that we get in to start we, we can't always use Legos in communicating and being able to regroup and process. And you and I were talking about just the different, the different things people do. And clearly part of what I do is help teach what I call micro practices and different things for people to start to retrain the brain. But part of the conversation that you and I had was how habits even when it's new, it's exciting. And then you kind of get flat with things and trying and doing different things, getting out of your normal patterns, even when it's all healthy, productive things. Can you talk to a little bit about what is something currently that you're doing as an individual to help with your reset and what you're doing right now to help stay grounded? Yeah, no, that's, that's a really great question. So uh, uh, for a long time, I've been journaling, right? And sort of in some ways, I, I'll just say I've struggled with journaling, right? I mean, it's been something that I've known I should be doing. And it took me a long time to really find the right sort of format uh, that, that works for me. And, you know, I tried a lot of those sort of different journal books that have a very sort of structured um, format to them. But in the end, I've just ended up with a with an open notebook. And I start off every day um, with grateful and thinking about, you know, what am I grateful for uh, with the day? Uh, and then an intention, like what am I going to do with this day um, mm -hmm. to be able to, to go forward and make the best use out of it? So those things I've been sort of working in for a while now, and it's really been um, very helpful uh, for me. Then I was sort of thinking about, well, actually now, you know, looking at I'm get to the end of my day or get to the end of the week. And sometimes I, you know, I've been having this sort of thought of, um, if I, you know, what have I achieved this week? What, what, what's happened? You know, I had this intention at the beginning of the day, like how did, how did my day go? So more recently I've been, um, folding in the discipline of getting to the end of the day and just writing down like, you know, what have I achieved today? And, and trying to you know, write down a couple of bullet points. And it's the same mindset to me of the gratitude at the beginning of the day. Like, what am I grateful for with this day in my life and the wonderful opportunities that I have getting to the end of the day and just thinking about, well, you know, what did I do today that, that, you know, move me further towards my goals. What, you know, who did I talk to? How far did I get in the conversation? What opportunity happened? You know, just to, to um, really mark those things. Um, and I think 
you know, you and I had talked, um, you know, about this sort of like this, this idea of micro goals and, and things like that. And um, I know Dr. Andrew Huberman is a um, researcher at, at Stanford. I listen to, to a lot of the work that he puts out in the world. And he talks about this one thing to sort of like train train the dopamine on the on the process, not on the end goal. And so part of one of the things that he talked about in the podcast is to to talk, um, when you have these moments when you you make the small wins, you mark those wins by saying, "Well, you know, I, I'm not at my goals yet, but I'm headed in the right direction." And there's something about that, just like, well, I'm not there yet, but I'm on the right course that gets the little piece of dopamine <laughs> going. And you're sort of like, okay, well, that, that win, no matter how small it was, at least I'm still heading in the right direction. So I've been mindful about that and incorporating that into my practice more recently. Yeah. Thank you for that. I love it. And you're so right. And especially when you think about big teams and big goals and as individuals, as business owners, we all have big goals that we want to achieve. And that's usually why people are either become stressed, overwhelmed and burned out or just flat out give up because it's like that giant mountain. And when we break it down a win is a win. Our brain cannot designate between big or small, but looking at this big obstacle seems like a mountain we're never going to climb. So the more that we can look at every little possible victory, every accomplishment, no matter how little we think cognitively it is, you're absolutely right. Our brain registers and we start getting more and more of those dopamine hits in a positive way that moves us towards the direction versus some of the habits that don't serve us and some of the smaller dopamine things. And we're not going to talk about bad habits today. We're going to talk about productive things. <laughs> yeah. Well, one of the stories that has really fascinated me is um, I've been reading several accounts of U.S. Navy SEALs um, going through their training and getting through Hell Week, which is the beginning of their training. And it's, you know, five or six days of continual cold and, and wet and, and in the sand and exercise and push-ups and running down the beach and then into the water and things. And there's, a, there's mindsets that they are seeing in people that are successful in getting through this, this training. And, and one of them is, you know, we talk about these long goals that overwhelm people. And what I've been reading is that, you know, at the beginning of the week when they're already tired and wet, the idea of it's five more days of this um, is, is overwhelming and, and can defeat um, people going through this training. And so what they do is the technique of micro goals, which is just really bring, you know, the event horizon closer and closer and closer. And it's, and it's whatever, it, whatever you need. It's like, well, I'm, I'm wet and cold now, but I can get through the next hour. Okay. Can I get through the next hour? Yes. I'm good with that. Well, maybe that's like, I'm, you know, I've just done a hundred pushups. I, I just need to do one more pushup. Can I get through one more pushup? And. And so they bring the horizon closer and closer and closer. And sometimes um, it gets down to, I just need to take one more breath. Can I take one more breath? Got it. Done. Okay, let's do one more breath. Um, and they found that, that, that people who successfully get through the program um, have really been very skilled at being able to just bring the goals closer down, closer to yourself, to, to be achievable, get through that goal, achieve it, you're done, okay, now the next one, the next one. And don't think about this five more days of being freezing cold, doing push-ups and running up and down a beach because uh, apparently the ones that do that are like, I'm done, <laughs> can't do it. So It makes I, sense. Hmm. And we do the same, you know, when I'm working with, with business leadership teams, um, working with them about their goals and I help them you know, set a North Star in terms of a 10-year goal for the business. 
right? Really like where get everybody on the same page about where they're heading. Um, but then we bring that closer as well. And we figure out a, a three year picture for the business. But that's, you know, three short years from now, but it's still out there. So then what's the one year plan? And we get that set. And then we work on 90 day priorities, right? And so we just keep on bringing it closer and closer to the point where people are able to say, Oh, I can achieve this. I know what I need to do. I can go for it, get this thing done, and then we're worried about the next thing, um, one step at a time. Yes, I love that. And it's that's the power of really looking at your goals, but being able to be connected to the present as well. And so clearly, that's where all these practices come into play. That's why we spend this time in meditation or understanding mindfulness, but you've already talked about it. Just those habits that you personally set yourself from your morning and your evening review, those start putting that reference where you now can be more present. It's no different with a business organization. It's just what goals and how do we start chunking those down? Absolutely. And we have to get them to the point where um, things aren't overwhelming, right? And I think, you know, this is sort of what we are seeing a little bit. Um, talking with folks and, and, and business clients in and, and the market at the moment is just this idea of we've come through this, you know, pandemic and there's all this opportunity ahead. Um, but at the same time, a lot of people are finding that opportunity overwhelming because, they're exhausted because we've just, you know, spent 15, 16 months running a marathon and getting through that. So um, I think that's it's very useful to have tools and techniques to, you know, reduce the overwhelm, to, to be able to avoid the burnout, to be able to get things down to the point where people can say, I know what I can achieve today, you know, the next hour, <laughs> the next 10 minutes, whatever it needs to be. <laughs> And and I love the perspective of looking at how do Navy SEALs survive among what most would call the most grueling training. Sometimes it's just literally one breath at a time. If we can put that in perspective of what we deal with in our everyday personal and business lives, that should give us more hope that we can actually achieve what we want to achieve. Mm -hmm. Well, when I, um, my first job out of college, I was sailing on this white boat uh, behind me here, um, helping get it ready to go sail around the world. And so, you know, I'm a mechanical engineer. I'd gone to college, you know, done my work at college, the first job out of college. I'm now on this professional sailing team, getting up at six o'clock in the morning and going to the gym because we had to train to, to get ready. And I remember you know, our trainer was this Commonwealth um, gold medal weightlifter, incredible, strong, fireplug guy. <laughs> and um, he had us do this exercise. We'd do these like two hour long HIIT workouts. <laughs> it was supposed to be seven minutes, but I know it's two hours long. And at <laughs> some stage we had this bar on our backs and we were doing endless numbers of squats and things like that and this bar is just getting more and more painful just sort of like digging into the muscles in my shoulders but I just you know I remember him saying you know just like 10 more seconds just 10 more seconds I you know I'm sure it wasn't right but at that stage you're just sort of like so out of it you're just like yes all I need to do is get through these next 10 seconds and and then this pain will be over <laughs> But then there's another 10 seconds and there's another 10 seconds uh, and things like that. So that was a really, you know, I, I didn't necessarily enjoy it at the time, right, being in that. Um, but I see the training that, you know, and having that lesson at a very, very early stage in my career is like, you know, times can get hard. And but if you just hang in and you don't quit and you endure and you um, persevere, then you can get through. Uh, and as long as you keep moving forward, um, you, can, you can make progress. <laughs> I think most people can relate, especially when it comes to exercising, working out, running, hit training, whatever. 
I think most people can relate. It's your mind that runs out much faster than your body. You, we think our bodies are going through pain or giving up, but it's our mind that wants to quit quicker than our body. So I love these perspectives of if we can chunk things down, 10 more seconds, one more lap, one more rep, whatever you want to say, you would be amazed at how much you're actually doing over a given amount of time. But it's, it's that training the mindset because how easy would that be to quit the moment you start feeling pain, the moment you start feeling resistance? It's just easy, but mm. that doesn't get you any closer to your goal. So that's why all of these things and strategies come into play. So you can do 10 more seconds and get a little bit closer to what you're actually wanting to accomplish. Yeah. One of the other um, things that I've been reading a lot over the last couple of years is about Stoic philosophy and, you know, Marcus Aurelius. And, of course, you know, there's this whole book um, written by Ryan Holiday called The Obstacle is the Way. And I really I love that phrase uh, and I keep it very sort of close to me because, you know, when you're feeling that resistance, like, I don't want to go there. This is going to be painful and, you know, difficult and things like that. Well, why is this happening to me? Like, why me? You know, that sort of thing. To have that in your mind of, no, this difficulty is the path, right? And, and a lot of people, a lot of different philosophies and religions say the same thing in different ways, but it's sort of like, you know, this is the path for you to go through this resistance um, to go through this difficult um, journey and to come out the other side. And you're going to be better off for that. You're going to learn some things about that. Um, you know, get outside of your comfort zone. I'm not saying it's easy, <laughs> but just I think, you know, to have that idea of um, going into it rather than running away from it gets you to a better place. They don't call it growing pains for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I really, I think that's, um, um, you know, Tim Ferriss has the same sort of thing. He sort of says like the, your degree of success in life is uh, related to the number of difficult conversations you're prepared to have. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that's, that's one that I sort of keep looking at every once in a while too. And I have to pick up the phone and, and give somebody a call. <laughs> yeah. It's so interesting. You brought up the obstacle is the way I just pulled that out uh, of my bookshelf. I read it when it first came out and I had a conversation very recently again about that book and just pulled it out very recently and was talking about it. So I'm glad you brought that up. And it's, it's so true. And that's, you know, John Maxwell talks about the law of the rubber band of stretching, literally kind of stretching out of your comfort zone. And it's, it's expansive. We don't realize that we do have this capacity to expand, but we like everything in our nice little safety bubble and our comfort zone that what we're used to, but sometimes what we're used to isn't really that great. And doing the same things over and over doesn't always produce the results that we're looking for. So that's, you know, we talk about all these things and I just want to be clear and I, I want to hear your perspective too. There's no one thing that works for everyone. And even though I approach things most often from neuroscience and looking at how mindfulness and emotional intelligence can come into play, that's also just one piece of it. It's all mindset. It all comes down to mindset. But you mentioned that at, at the beginning, these are different tools that you have to help facilitate these types of um, progress and evolution. Yeah. And, that, and as I said at the beginning too, like, I mean, I struggled for a long time with like figuring out like the right sort of journaling practice that was going to work for me. Um, when, it, when I hadn't found the right practice, I didn't do it. Right. So, you know, ultimately it, it wasn't working. Um, but what I love is sort of like this idea that, you know, there is more research being done now, you know, on the brain and the neurochemistry and how things work there. And then you can take those 
friends and incorporate them into practice and um and just sort of know that your neurobiology your neurochemistry is helping you it's working for you um you know to take you to where you want to go um you know and i work with my clients a lot you know around this sort of idea of just you know our central nervous system and the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic and how we spend each day just sort of going between these these two systems and just sort of like that awareness of what's going on and in particular when we get triggered right when something happens we get that email comes in at work you know the client cancels somebody leaves you know somebody gets fired like i mean all of these things are can can be triggering moments right and when you get triggered and you go outside of your your window of tolerance then you know your brain actually starts shutting down you sort of go into these you know the fight flight freeze type mode and that doesn't work very well when you've actually got <laughs> decisions that need to be made and you've got to talk to people and you've got to figure out like where you know where do we take the business now and how do we get out of this crisis um so you need some tools to be able to understand just what's happening like oh i'm getting triggered now i need to do something so i can get my thinking brain back online and i can like figure out a way forward from this um and i you know i didn't know these things 30 years ago when i started my career 20 years ago when i was a leader in a business no one taught me any of this stuff this is you got triggered people you know had tantrums were <laughs> at work right all the yelling you know was going on all of this sort of stuff it's like whoa hang on a second we can do this a better way actually we can do this a better way <laughs> yeah you know and going back to that quote you were talking about is the number of difficult conversations you're willing to have that's also taking taking the accountability of having that awareness we tend to blame everyone around us for those temper tantrums but we don't and I, obviously i'm speaking on a, a greater scale but the more awareness that we have of ourselves our own um awarenesses to the different types of triggers not just how we physically react how we mentally react and and it's it's a process and you're absolutely right it's a long journey we don't go from awareness to perfection ever <laughs> but we go from awareness to improving every single time that we can take a step back and say okay and the more that we can understand how our body is responding the more that we can actually have a more intellectual response. I I really appreciate you saying that because this is such important work and flying off the handle or you know that aggressive command and control type of way of dealing with things it's not productive. It's just not. <laughs> yeah. we got to find like between stimulus and response you know not to have them to be so close but to like try to get them apart a little bit there exactly. um you know so you can take a breath and um and i think yeah i from my perspective i think the workplace has changed a lot over the last 30 years and i think what you know coming into the workplace 30 years ago sort of what i expected the workplace to be is that doesn't fly anymore and i think now people coming into the workplace expect it to be very different and yes yeah, so the old command and control do what i say um you know when i say sort of method of i i mean people still run their businesses like that but i think they are struggling to find the right people to come join them in that and you know because people come and look at that type of, of leadership and management say well i don't want to be a part of that um so look to a different business where you know you have a more servant leadership you know model more participation 
um, but still we've got to get the work done. But it's, you know, there's a lot of things that are changing and just sort of to have this awareness of um, how might we do things differently? You know, how can we structure things differently so that people come to work and actually enjoy coming to work? And when they enjoy coming to work, then we can create an environment where people are at their maximum productivity. Now we're winning, right? Now we're getting somewhere um, and, and can get the consistency and, and end up scaling the business and, and really being more successful with it. And that's, that's what I love doing is just helping my clients be able to say, where do you want to go? Okay, well, I've got a chart here. So let's, let's map out a, a voyage and let's get on it. <clears throat> let's get sailing. <laughs> I love that. And what you're doing by helping people get sailing you're reducing that stress, you're reducing the burnout, and you're helping create more well being, more well being, just, you know, from a bigger perspective, the world becomes a better place. And people can metaphorically sail their version of sailing, have the voyage that they want. And that's what it's about for us all to be productive and happy and have well being. So what is your just really quickly, what's do you have a ideal business that you work with? And two parts to this question. What do you think that your biggest um, superpower is of how you can help organizations? Sure, that's a, that's a good, good couple of questions there. So my, my target market, the best people that I work with are business owners and leadership teams of companies with between about 10 to 250 people, who, people who want to grow their business. The biggest thing for me is it's about a mindset, right? So this is very germane to our conversations, all about a mindset. The biggest differentiator for me is it's a, a mindset of being open and willing to be vulnerable, to want to change, to know that there's some opportunity for the business and that they need some help to get there. And, and that's what I do. And I, I, um, you know, I think when you talk about my superpowers, so I, you know, I've got a lot of different tools in my toolbox, but I've got this engineering and project management experience and business experience and sort of to be able to, see across those areas but i also i'm you know really invested in what high performing what makes high performing teams and to go back to you know your introduction that you said at the very beginning like you know the, the beginning of my career was was working with these incredible high performing teams and seeing the teams that everything just clicked and, and it was like magic working together and how they were able to go win, you know, incredible races, but then also to be on teams where we had resources, but things weren't clicking and we weren't all on the same page about where we were going. Um, and so I've got, and, you know, I invested a lot of my life in supporting, you know, all of these different types of teams and coming up with designs and, and working with them. Um, and I felt, you know, what it's like to invest your life in several years of trying to help go get a goal and, and not to get there. Uh, and to see that maybe, you know, if we'd been able to structure the team differently, um, you know, if we'd had somebody like me come in to be able to help the team, um, we might have been more successful. And so that's what motivates me now is I, you know, like to help be able to get you know, teams with more discipline, more accountability, but having more fun and everybody on the same page and really like having a more enjoyable life, um, you know, moving their businesses forward. That's what I really love doing. I love it. And it's kind of that if only, if only we knew this way back when, how much different could things be? But thank goodness that we're on this journey now where we can continue to learn and grow and share with others as we do. Yep. Yes. I mean, it's, you do your wonderful podcast and, you know, I get out and do the work that I do, but it's just bringing knowledge, you know, to the world and saying, you know, hang on a second. There's another way we can do things here. <laughs> and, uh, you might want to like, you know, check this out because, um, 
you get to get to your goals, have a more successful life and a more enjoyable life. You just you know, incorporate some tools and some frameworks and some different ideas rooted in neuroscience, you know, rooted in psychology, rooted in business. We put all these things together and um, off we go. And who knows what type of beautiful voyage we can embark on if we do incorporate these things, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, you know, this is where it you know, comes down to the practice that you do and the practice that I do, right? I mean, it's sort of like, um, it's not a pretty phrase, but eat your own dog food. <laughs> it's yeah. sort of like, okay, you know, like when I'm stressed and I'm not perfect by any means and I, I get stressed and things and overwhelmed as well, but, you know, I've just got to be able to pause and say, I've got some tools. I'm going to try doing this. I'm going to try doing that. Um, and to be able to sort of like create a little bit of a window there that I can yeah. um, start, you know, thinking um, more constructively about, you know, how to move forward with things. Yeah. So um, I think that's really the thing is sort of being able to have these tools and to be able to apply them. Yeah, that's what it's all about. Where can people reach you, Steve? I know you're willing to have conversations and to be able to learn more about businesses and people and their organizations and teams. Where can they reach out to you at? Yeah, um, so on my website at catalator.com, it's spelled C-A-T-Y-L-A-T-O-R, so catalator.com. You'll find a lot of information there, um, a lot of blog posts and other information. I'm also on LinkedIn. That's Stephen A. Morris. Hey, uh, people are welcome to reach out and connect with me. Um, shoot me an email, steve at catalator.com. As you said, you know, I, I just love talking with business owners hearing about their passion, hearing about their vision, where they want to take their business and having a conversation about what's in the way. You know, what are the obstacles? What what do we need to get through here in order to be able to to get to where you want to go with your business? And always open to having those types of conversations and just seeing seeing what we can do, see what we've got in the toolbox that might be useful uh, for where business owners are wanting to go with their company and their leadership team. Perfect. And we'll make sure to post all those links, your email, your LinkedIn, and your website. So that'll be in our show notes as well. Steve, I can't thank you enough for being here with us today. Thank you for sharing your your wisdom, your experience, and helping guide us to be better individuals and leaders and teams. I really appreciate it. Well, you're very welcome. I've enjoyed the conversation. It's, It's always great talking with you, Heather you as well. And I want to thank you listeners or watchers, however you're tuning in today, and we will see you next time on the Go Reflect Yourself podcast. Are you ready to finally kick stress to the curb and reduce your anxiety and overwhelm so you can be that high performer, high functioning individual living with joy and peace every day? I would like to invite you to a free stress and burnout recovery masterclass coming up real soon, November 16th and 17th. This masterclass will teach you the quickest way to avoid and overcome burnout using the latest evidence-based neuroscience discoveries that I have been studying myself and implementing personally, professionally, and helping my clients over the last 10 plus years. If you'd like a free ticket, just head on over to heatherjkreider.com. You can learn all about it. The URL will be added to the show notes. The full address, heatherjkreider.com slash stress and burnout recovery event. I sure hope you take me up on this free offer and finally kick stress to the curb. This event is going to show you micro solutions, very practical, no matter what your situation or scenario. So you can be a high performer. So you can live with joy, with peace. So you can finally feel free of this anxiety and stress that is there. It's always there. We just have to learn a few simple strategies to be able to deal with it and balance and have harmony and get through the day sometimes with a smile on our face. Hope to see you there. Thank you so much. 
Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Go Reflect Yourself. Please rate and review this episode. And if something moved you, please feel free to share. For more inspired action or to stay in touch, head on over to GoReflectYourself.com or HeatherJKreider.com. You can also take the growth mindset quiz and learn where your current growth mindset lies. Stay in touch on all social media at Heather J. Kreider. Until next time, this is your host, Heather Kreider, and I am challenging you to go reflect yourself so you can discover and become who you are meant to be.